Now, I think there are similarities between big government and big church. Uh, you know, when we refuse to do what is best for ourselves, we allow the government to become our caretaker. We allow them to step in and to do for us what we should be doing for ourselves. And the government comes along and says, look, I'll take care of you when you're old. I'll give you health care. I'll take care of you if you're down on your luck. I'll send you a paycheck if you don't want to work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And when we refuse to think for ourselves, big church steps in and says, I'll do your thinking for you. You don't have to think of a thing. You don't even have to bring your Bible to church. I'll do the thinking for you. How many times have people said, well, my minister said, your minister said, look, your minister is wrong. He's been lied to also about the Bible. He's been lied in cemetery school, excuse me, uh, seminary school. He's been lied to. So your minister said, and that's people's greatest authority. My minister said so. Who gives a flip? Okay, now churches only give us what we want. You do realize that. And there's a variety of things that we want, by the way. If you want prosperity doctrine, in other words, you want to believe that God is just a blessing machine. He'll give you that BMW. He'll give you that three-car garage. He'll give you a new home. He'll give you that Mercedes Benz. He'll give you that Hawaiian vacation. He is nothing more than a blessing machine. If that's what you want, then that's what church gives you, a prosperity doctrine. If you want a feel-good doctrine where you just jump church pews, speak in a gibberish that makes you look like a fool, then that's what your church will give you. If you want a prophecy doctrine, you know, church, that's all about prophecy and the end time, and you know, and I've always said, what's the use in knowing the future if you're not going to be a part of it? Wouldn't it be brighter to first make a decision to get serious and be a part of the end time or whatever? Okay. You know, it's, it's not about truth, what I'm saying. It's about what people want. Church is not so much about truth. It's about giving people, giving people what they want. It's not about truth. If you want a church, a church that has signs, miracles, and wonders, they're slapping people upside the head, they're healing Bertha Butt's big toe, they're, um, they're doing all these healings and signs, that's exactly what the church will give you. If you want a church where nothing is required of you, and that's the majority of churches, majority of people anyway, just believe, just come to the cross, just give your heart to, just give your hand to the preacher. There's nothing, you, grace plus nothing. If you want that, that's exactly what church will give you. If you want a church where everything is mystical, it's smoke and mirrors, it's candle wax. People are turned on by candle wax. I don't know why, but they are. Uh, where the priest speaks in Latin, you can't even understand it. That's exactly what the church will give you. It's not about truth. It's about what people want. In some cases, people are so brain dead that they turn to cults. They turn to gurus who will tell them when to get up and when to fast and when to go to bed. Or they'll get a part of a, in a dictatorship where they threaten their salvation. And if you leave the fold, you will lose your salvation. Yeah, they become that, a part of that nonsense. That's a sure sign of religious addiction, by the way, when you get involved in cults. Religious addiction is nothing more than you don't want to, you refuse to think for yourself. That's all religious addiction is. You just will not think for yourself. So why do we want this? Because none of these things equals, none of these things I've just went through, a church that makes you feel good, a church that prosperity doctrine, none of this equals a relationship with God. That's what you got to get your mind around, that none of this is a relationship with God. 